All right. Let's try again with a little bit better Wi-Fi. So, yeah, of course you would have told, well, I mean, one, I love that. How did she guess? From your belly or was it like some spiritual feeling that she had or what happened? Oh, my God. Okay. I always forget this part. When she said um, that I was having a baby, she said, but this baby might die. Shut the fuck up. I know. Up. I know. I know. And like, oh, I know. What? I'm like covered in goosebumps. Your what? four and a half year old said that. Yeah. Yeah. And does she still, t like, she would still obviously talk about Sienna now and see her and feel her and all the things, surely. Yeah. Yeah, she does. Yeah. What? How did she even know, like, I'm, I'm mind blown. We as adults don't even know that babies are going to die. We're like, no, that's not going to happen. Like, how did she know that? Well, that's what my response was. That's not going to happen. Like, what? <laughs> and did she say, I told you so when it happened? And she's like, mommy, told you. <laughs> I can't even mm. believe it. What an absolute yeah. blessing she is. Like, that's, <sighs> wow. Yeah. And so how did yeah. how did that and so then obviously so you guys got told you're at the 22 week scan the sonographer has said I'm so sorry your baby has died hubby is just a mess and crying you're feeling like yep I had a feeling and then what happens um, they offer us a spot in the um, back room and they say your doctor might give you a call um, we're going to put a referral through to the hospital now, um, but you're going to go home and um, just be really nice, like kind to yourselves. <sighs> and um, yeah, we sat in that back room and it was just like, what, what do we do now? Like, <sighs> Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. We got okay, you. Good. Uh, it's a little bit hard when we're dealing with this I know, internet. It's a delay. Time. I know. Yeah. Um, so then we, um, yeah, we, we, okay, we didn't actually go straight home. So we went to my dad's, well, my parents, but only my dad was home. Um, yeah. And we gave him the news. Uh, and they gave they gave me a photo of um, poor Sienna. Obviously, we didn't know the sex at that time as well. And, and that's um, what I was going to say. So you said that they put the thing on the screen and you just didn't even recognise what you saw. What did that look like? Like, what is it that you see at that point? So, the, like, you know when you go to a scan and there's, like, the beautiful brain and the heart pumping and there's just, like, life in the baby? Um, this one was just like the shell of a baby. Wow. Like that, that outside line. And the head was quite squashed. Oh, wow. And you could see that. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. That's heavy. I don't know why I'm laughing at this now, but like I, like I just went around to my parents and my in-laws house, like holding that photo. I didn't even oh, show it to shit. them. I was just holding it. Like I was yeah. just holding it, like, like, probably just trying to, like, comprehend work out what the fuck was going on. Mm, yeah. 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 Um. So my dad gave me a real awkward hug. Um. Said I'm sorry. Um. My mother-in-law was like, oh, like that's that's awful. Like our family's a bit awkward. So it's just like, <laughs> even Perfect. I was awkward. I was just like, yeah, it was just yeah. awkward as fuck. Yeah. Um. Love that. Uh, and then, um, this is probably the part that really shows how kind of mad we all are. Um, my husband was meant to be like going on a work trip over a Friday, Saturday. Um, yeah. and we'd found this news out on the Wednesday 
And I was just like, well, of course you should still go on this work trip. Like you've worked so hard for it. Like, like just go, we'll sort this out later. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> just, we'll just deal with it down the track. I'll deal with this. Fuck. Oh. Um, so he had to go buy suits and I was like, well, I'm not staying at home. So I'll come with you. So, and I just didn't want to go home basically. Um, so the one thing I did do was put a call into my friend who'd had a um, TFMR stillbirth. Okay, yeah. Um, and I was, like, you know, bawling my eyes out by this point. Mm. But I was just like, oh, you know. And she had a toddler in the car with her. Like, it would have been, like, Shit. terrible timing. <laughs> um, but I just said, oh, you know, I found out my baby's died and I have to choose how I'm going to deliver this baby. Um, and I always knew I'd do natural delivery, but I just wanted to talk to someone about that. Yeah. Yeah. And how did she react to that? She was amazing. Like, mm. I think you... You've, you've said you've got had someone as well that you were able to call. Oh yeah, listened to mm. Amy's. Yeah. Um, oh good. Story. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and um, yeah. This and you know what? She was my beautician as well. Is that so oh, weird? Yeah. yeah. No, not at yeah. all. I'm a beautician, and well, I would like. Well, that's to what think I mean. Like, it's my so clients weird that, would like, call me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that she's a beautician. You're a beautician. Um. Yeah. So I um I called her and um. Yeah, she she was like, oh, it's, you know, it's still your baby. Um, try, just try and make memories with your baby. And, mm. like, yeah, just, yeah, she was, she was really great. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so I, I went to the shops and, and I, I bought this teddy. So when Michael and I, when he was buying suits, I bought my first thing for Sienna. Uh, first and, oh, first and I only, love that. Only little thing. <laughs> I love her. Yeah. 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 And it was such a good decision because now, like, we all have Sienna's teddy and, yeah, yeah it's it's really nice. That's so precious. Yeah. Um, all right. Over the next few days, um, so I had – I knew I had one more day before the kids uh, – before I would have three days with the kids – Mm -hmm. So um, that was the day that I like spoke to the hospital and booked in my induction and I arranged for it to be on the Monday. So it would be like the least disruptive to my little family. And um, yeah, obviously I, I had had a chance to speak to my mom and um, yeah, she was like, whatever I need to do to help you guys, like just uh, let me know. Yeah. So um on the Friday, I, um, my mum, yeah, helped me out a bit with the kids and um, just kind of kept it, like, as normal as, as possible. Yeah. And um, one of my friends um, got me a little voucher to get a little uh, Pandora bracelet. Oh, um, that's so stone. sweet. Yeah, yeah. So I had only told a couple of people by this stage. I was just kind of calling. It was a little bit of a therapy, just call someone up and tell them what happened mm. and yeah. to that. Um, and then on the Saturday, that was when I was definitely like just being like mum on autopilot and I tried to just take the kids to gymnastics like what I would normally do. Far out. And I walk in and like a little baby cries. Oh. And I was, I just broke down. Because I was just, like, so triggered. And, you know, my kids have no idea what's going on. Like, I've just, you know, got to keep it together. And this group of mums who, like, I didn't even know well at all, um, I told them. And I'm like, you know, my, my baby's died and my baby's still inside me. No oh, shit. And I'm just, like, acting like everything's fine. Here mm. I am. Mm. And, of course, like. There was no social worker in that group of mums. Um, no one really. They basically were like, I'm so sorry. I hope you feel better soon. Oh. And then they just didn't talk to me for the rest. Mm. 
it's so it's so hard like I even I just went into the chemist yesterday to get a script and this lady who normally talks to me all the time just fully avoided me and I thought fuck I'm like that awkward chick that people don't want to talk to now <laughs> like do you know what I mean it's like they don't know what to say I totally get that and just let's pre- like I don't know yeah and you're just like yeah. but, but you like I'm I'm you and I'm like yeah but my baby died can someone just talk to me please like oh you poor thing fuck that is horrendous. Um, so at that point, yeah, I messaged Michael and I was like, yeah, today's not so good. This was mm. maybe not such a great idea. Mm-hmm. Um, but I went, again, I went over to my parents um, for the afternoon and they sort of helped out until, um, yeah, until Michael got home. Yeah. Um, and then I've been doing a lot of research. So I was trying to work out, um, you know, what kind of baby I was going to be giving birth to Mm. um, what names I wanted to give for either sex. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I was putting like little trinkets together. Um, You know, we're Catholic. So we had a lot of like rosary beads and angels and crosses and stuff. And I like pulled all that stuff together. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the counselor at Red Nose actually said to me, like, it sounds like you still just um, were preparing like to, to give birth to your baby like you just didn't understand in a way that your baby had died wow and I was like that might be true and also I think it's like you just still are nesting like you're still the mum yeah how do I still give her the most perfect of everything no matter what correct I think maybe I was just like I don't have much time to like be mum while she's physically here so like this is what, like, this is all I get. I need to make <sighs> the most so of beautiful. it. Yeah. Yeah. So I did definitely go into it with, like, a few, yeah, hopes around what that might look like. And I guess it's that classic thing of, like, trying to control the uncontrollable. Mm. Yeah. And also, I mean, you're probably thinking, like, and I have heard this on, like, some of the other girls as well, like, what if they got it wrong? What if I birth and baby comes out okay? Like this is just all one big mistake. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think you're always, you're always hoping just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Mm. Mm. But I can't imagine yeah. it being that, you know. <sighs> Her little heartbeat had stopped already. Mm. Um. So then that Sunday morning, um, I actually went back to read because I'd written down, like, the things that I did on those days to remember. And I'd actually gotten up and started making pancakes for my family. Oh, my gosh. Good mama. You're a good wife. I know. (laughs) I'm crazy. But, like, I mean, what else are you supposed to do? Like, pancakes are yum. (laughs) (laughs) But I actually had started to be, like, a little bit in early labour. Wow, I wonder that. Just, okay. Yeah, and I just woke up like, yeah. I, I woke up being like, I, I'm not okay. I can't parent today. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, that was my feeling. And then um, thankfully, um, you know, little Sienna knew that too. And so I actually had a little bloody show. Okay. And, um, that was enough for me to – I waited a couple of hours to see if, like, labour started a bit more, but I called the hospital and I was like, look, I'm not booked in until tomorrow and I'm in the public system, so um, they can't always um, get you in. Sorry. Um, but I was like, look, um, you know, I normally – I, you know, my second child was birthed really, really fast and I don't, you know, want to deliver mm. this baby at home. Shit. Um, the woman on the other side, she was lovely to me, but she was also like, you're not even in the system. She said what? <laughs> what did she say? She goes, I can't even find your booking in the system. <laughs> I know, get out. It's like, okay. Okay, no worries. Fuck, what the um, heck? 
I know. I know. Oh, and she, so she said, just come, just come in, like get yourself ready and, and come in. And the other thing that was classic about this public system was like, you call up, you've got to tell your whole story. Yeah. You go mm -hmm. in, you've got to tell your whole story. And like eventually, and I was just crying every time and, and yeah, it was hard. And then when I finally got in, um, so they finally said to me, like once I was admitted, everyone knows your story now, like it's on your file, it's clear, you will not have to keep recounting this. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So that was great. Even though now I love obviously talking about it, but, um, you know, yeah, it's a lot at this time. It's so even yesterday I'd had a bad day and I got home and Dylan's like, how was your day? And I was like, yeah, good. Told the story for the millionth time. Like, and I just got like upset because I'd gone to the doctor and then I thought she'd know the story, but she didn't. And so why is my dog barking? Um, and she didn't. So sometimes you think that someone's going to know and then they don't. And it wasn't her fault. There was no lack of communication. Oh, hello. You're so cute. Mm, thank you. Goodbye. You're going to be on the next podcast. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cute. My auntie who watches every episode. She'll probably be mortified that she was just in the background. She just Aww. got me a pink set of tracksuits. Oh my God. She's so oh, sweet. Oh, nice. She's so cute. That's so lovely. Um, yeah. Just going to this doctor yesterday and it wasn't, um, yeah, it wasn't her fault that she didn't know, but she just, I'd asked me what my plans were for pregnancy and things like that. And if I plan to have a family and then I told her everything and like, I love talking oh. about it. I know. But like I just said to Dylan, when I got home, like, I guess it's so much easier for men because they don't have to talk about it constantly. And I feel like sometimes I feel like my grief is so much heavier or that Dylan's doing fine and I'm not, but it's like, we are constantly reminded every single day, pretty much, mm -hmm. you know, different to men and, and yeah, going to an appointment can just, and it ends up being, that's a question and it's just so hard. Yeah. It's so hard. And you just constant, and I do love talking about Millie and I do love talking about it, but like, yeah, just every single day is a constant reminder of everything you've been through. And even this doctor yesterday, she said, how are you normal? And she's like, and she wasn't being mean. Like she was like, you're amazing. And I was like, I'm not, and I'm not normal and I'm not okay. And I'm very broken. <laughs> I'm just telling you the story without crying because I've told it a billion times. And then yeah, you detach I went, from it. Yeah, I had it felt and I, it feels strange sometimes telling the story and not crying, but it's like, it's almost on yeah autopilot. You, know, you just autopilot. tell it a million times over. Yeah. But I think that, also was horrible because like she's gone in there asking you like pretty loaded questions like so that's that's so, so triggering for you like it's not like you chose to tell the story on your terms like it was heavy it was heavy yeah Fuck. i know i know yeah um, so so we started the birth yeah 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 so i'm up, I'm up to the birth mm -hmm. um and so it, yeah it was an, an induction um, they said the cervix was still closed, but they um, offered to start the induction. They're like, we've got a, a midwife ready for you um, if that's like what you want to do today. And um, yeah, Michael and I are so pragmatic. We're like, what time is it? Like, how long do you think it would take? I've got to pick up my kids like, at bro, three. Like, yeah. But I was like, bro, otherwise we have to come back here again tomorrow. Like, who the, who mm. the hell wants to do that? And, um, yeah, my mother-in-law was the same. She's like, like, just, I've got the kids. They're fine. Just like, yeah, I think it just shows like we struggle to, to worry about ourselves. Like we're just constantly yeah. thinking about the kids. Mm. Um, yeah. So, I, you know, I, I think I said at the start, like I'm quite a determined person. Like I'm really like, oh, okay, I'm here to do something. I've got to do it right. So I went into that labor. And I was like, I need oxytocin. I have to be like happy, not even happy, but like just in the mood. I'd made like my, my, my pod, like, um, my, what is it called? Soundtrack, like playlist. You, know, yeah. you just, yeah, your playlist. Like I was just, I just didn't want complications. And I was like, the better I can do this, the better I won't have any complications. Yeah. Yep. 
fair assumption. Um, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, it was a weird environment. Like, it's weird. It's weird to spend the entire day, like, in hospital. You can hear the other babies. Um, you hear mum screaming. Like, <sighs> and you, you know you're that case today. There might be others as well, but mm. you know you're that case today with the stillborn. Fuck. Um, but, like, having said that, they do a good job at the hospital. Like, um, they, yeah, gave us, talked us through um, what happens next and brought the social worker in and she gave us books for the kids and uh, we had a really lovely midwife. That's so nice. So, yeah, it's it's such a weird environment. Like, it's so surreal because if you explain it to other people, they're like, what do you mean, like, you know, that you made this almost like a safe, comfortable space to be mm. in. Like, they can't imagine that there's any positives, but I'm like, you know, no. they do really, um, yeah, they, they, you know, they tell you, they, they use the fact that it's your baby. Like, they say mum, they say baby. And and that's just because so it special. Because like, like, you are mum and it is your baby. And I, yeah, it's, uh, and I know what you're saying. Like, for us, we're like, of course they would say that. But for anyone else, it's like, until you've experienced it, you don't know that you need those things. Yeah, that's right. That's mm. right. I'm glad you And had the a good other experience. thing about me, yeah, and the other thing about me is I love birth stories. So, like, I always used to listen to Australian birth stories. Now I just mm -hmm. listen to your podcast and I love, uh... like, yeah, yours are, yours are heartbreaking. Um mm. I, I still, uh, Hannah's one about the shattered teeth. I was like, what? Like. I know. So um, wild. Yeah, so wild. Um, but even the, like, the power stories, like the pregnancy after loss, like, I love hearing that, like, that birth after. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It gives me so much hope hearing those stories. Like, you just. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I, I yeah. yearn for that feeling, but also equally scared. But yeah, so want that healing birth story after. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so, yeah, I really wanted to, um, yeah, so obviously, yeah, I was kind of like trying to, yeah, birth the way I would normally birth in a way, but it felt mm -hmm. weird. Like it just felt like, I don't know, it was very performative. It was kind of like you've just got to try and get in the zone. Yeah. Um, and, um, at one stage, you know, I was like, you'd never normally feel up like to, towards your cervix, but I'm like, well, there's no risks here really. So I felt up and I could feel a little foot coming out because obviously mm. baby was, um, was she breech, breech? obviously. Mm. Yeah. Cause yeah. still, still too little to have turned. Yeah. Um, so I kind of hold on to that because I'm like, that was a special moment. Yeah, of, that's um, so sweet. Birth, yeah. And then um, another funny moment was like that when she finally kind of um, like first came out like a little bit like into the vagina, um, I could actually like feel you know, because it was legs, I wasn't used to that. And I was like, what the hell is in my vagina? Like I just forgot. For a second like what was going on uh-huh um so that was funny <laughs> you're like ah um, oh, there's feet hanging out of the inside of me <laughs> yeah i was like what the yeah exactly like what um, i actually have a full-on <laughs> vision of that right now <laughs> yeah. uh, and then um yeah the the birth took a little bit of a while because there wasn't a lot of like she wasn't helping me um, i've heard that her. yeah yeah. And because I only had to get to like whatever it was, five or six centimeters dilated, the contractions were further along. So I'd have to wait for like, you know, five minutes rather than like only two minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For a contraction. Um, and so after a little while, they started to, the midwife started to be like, look, I'm just going to get the doctor. Um, everyone's going to, uh, you know, there's going to be a few people coming in now just because basically the biggest fear with an, a loss at this gestation is for the mum that she'll like um, hemorrhage. Okay. Um, or also the placenta can be too stuck because you know how like obviously a lot of people have been talking about placental abruptions, like the placenta yeah. might not 
come off and just end up ah, okay. still inside the mum. So placenta abruption is when it comes out to, to comes apart from the wall too soon. And is there a risk when you're in the second trimester that it won't come apart at all? Won't come away Correct. from the wall. Okay. Yeah. At all. Yeah. 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 Um, and then the doctor put on her gloves and then I got one more contraction and everything came out, baby, placenta, umbilical cord. And, um, wow. I thanked the doctor. I was like, Oh, thank you so much. And she goes, um, that was all you. I just put on the gloves. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, I must have been scared off by the gloves. I was like, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do this. <laughs> I believe in me. Yeah. yeah. Good for um, you. So, look, birth, um, and I, I don't know if it's similar with cesareans, um, but you get, like, all the exact same rushes, like, um, physiologically, you know, that you would if the baby was alive. Yeah, I don't think it's the same. I, I, I mean, mine was, well, I don't know, because mine was extremely traumatic that Millie came out and was straight on the recess table and then I was, like, shaking and vomiting, which I always say I'm not sure whether that was from the trauma. I know that you can get cesarean shakes anyway, um, but mine was to a very, very, very high level. Again, I could, don't have anything to compare it to, but I imagine that you do get yeah. that normal oxytocin and all that kind of stuff, but a serotonin, oxytocin. Um, yeah, I didn't have it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I know, yeah. but and I do hear so often that this, yeah, I feel like the stillborn that you still do get that. It's still like, wow, I just birthed my baby, like, I spe- like for a vaginal birth, even with a stillborn. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So you get you, like what what you got that that rush of adrenaline as well, and I agree, it would have been like because of all the extra trauma. Mm. Um, but yeah, it is really common that you get like shakes and like yeah that it's just like this buzzing feeling Mm. um so then um that she'd already warned me the midwife that once um baby was delivered that they would take baby away and like check and kind of clean them up and then bring the baby back yeah um but it's like it's honestly like the most hard well you you know the feeling it's the most horrible feeling like you you've just delivered baby but baby is not with you yeah oh yeah it just sucks yeah yeah and and even though they knew the outcome of sienna like they couldn't just still put her straight on your chest or they just need to make sure everything looks not as yeah, traumatic, so she's I guess. Still in her, um, she was still in her sack, so they had to, like, actually, like, open Aww. that up and everything. But also just because of the um, the gestation, they, they they like to kind of, um, yeah, I, guess, I don't know. That's just a, a protocol that they do for, for that yeah. gestation. Yeah. Um, but, but then what happened is that, you know, it was taking a while and, like, no one was coming back. Um. And, yeah, I guess obviously you start to have that feeling like what's wrong, but, like, baby's already dead, so it's not like it's not your what's wrong. It's like. So true, yeah. Just like a. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. just like what's going on? Like, where's baby? Yeah. Like, can I yeah. name well, I really just wanted to know, like, like, who is this baby? Can I can I name them? Yeah. And you still didn't um, know then, a gender at this point. Yeah, I still didn't know a gender. Like, that was the main um, reward that was going to come out of yeah. like all of this like that was what that was really what I was hanging on to right it was like they're still my baby I'm still gonna get to name them I'm still of gonna course. get to imagine who they could have been like I can still do all that I still get to be their mum. yeah yeah and then they came back into the room and they said um I said oh like what did I have and they're like we're we're really sorry but baby is quite squashed and, like, we just can't say for sure if it's a boy or girl. Oh, fuck. Yeah. And so what, she hadn't grown, like, the genital area hadn't... At what point, during, what, at what gestation does their genitals usually grow? Like, because I... Yeah, okay. 
you've obviously done all your research about this. I had to do all this research. Yeah, I had to do all this research. And um, yeah, it was like between like 15 and 17 weeks. Yeah. Um, And so by about 18 weeks, um, you'd normally be able to tell. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so that really sent me into a spiral. Like I kind of almost felt like I was just a fool. Well, yeah, you know the feeling. Like I'm just a complete fool. Like what? Yeah. What idiot? Yeah. Like did I even have a baby? Like well, like what planet am I on? Like wow. You know, like this is just yeah. ridiculous. Um, yeah, I felt really embarrassed, Ooh. just ashamed even. Um, wow. And, you know, you get to, like, a dark place sometimes and the thoughts are just so bad. And so you just think, like, people are not even going to, like, everyone's going to forget your child. They're not even going to acknowledge your child, like, because, yeah. you know, yeah, you're just like, well, this doesn't count as anything. And and you're like, well, why can I feel it so heavily but no one else even feels it at all? Or, like... You just think, am I the only person that's going to grieve this and and am I being yes. unrealistic by grieving so much and hurting so badly? Yes, definitely. That's That were all the thoughts that I had. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then um, she, the midwife said to us, like, look, I don't normally recommend this, but, um, you know, baby's head is quite squashed. Um, like I would recommend that you don't, don't meet the baby. Oh, no. I know. I know. And, again, like, I was just, like, you know, and I'd seen that ultrasound, right? Like, I knew what I was walking into. I knew baby was going to be squashed. Um, But I was kind of like, oh, my God, like, what are we talking here? Like, like, like mm. smoosh the smithereens? Like, is there even, a, mm. like, a baby still here at all? And I just felt so embarrassed because I was like, you know, I thought I was 22 weeks. Like, I thought I had. Yes. Yeah. I thought I had a, a baby, like, not just mm. this situation. Um, but thankfully, while I was, like, off in bloody, like, just get me out of here land, um, Michael was like, oh, no, like, this is still our baby. Like, we want, we'll, we'll meet them. Oh, yay. Like, go, Dad. Like, thank you. Yeah, go, Dad. Mm. Go, Dad. <laughs> Because that would have that would have been the biggest mistake like I could have possibly made. If yeah. your thoughts were already, you know, did I even birth a child? What have I done? Uh, you know, all the things. Having then not met them, I think would have also added to that. Did that like just totally gaslight yourself of like did did that even just happen? I love yeah, that you still absolutely. met absolutely. Yes. Yes, yeah, so we met her, and while I was waiting um, for her to get all ready, I put out all my little memorial things, and I'd put out, I'd just got on the back of the childcare photos of Francesca and Joseph, Aww. so I put them next to our little cute um, ultrasound photo, and yeah, had some candles, had the teddy bear, um, and that was like what I was taking photos for of while I waited. Hmm. Um, and then we got a few shots like we got one of her um, in the little um, I don't know medical bassinet whatever they call those like hospital ones mm-hmm. um, just in the background and we um, like we did some stuff standing over her but we still um, at the time chose only to um, get it. like I'd already asked for a photo of the foot of the feet um, so the doctor had gotten me a photo with just um, her foot, mm. which I'll now cherish forever. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for some reason, I guess it was just we are all just so overwhelmed by that point. We just didn't know what we wanted, even though I thought I'd come in prepared. But by that point, I wasn't prepared anymore. Yeah. Um, so we just didn't take any other photos of her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. which is but so. But I'm okay with it. Like, yeah. I wish yeah. I had. But I'm also, like, I think we did, like, the best we could in the situation. Like, yeah. 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 And. Um, but, yeah, she wasn't, um, yeah. you know, she was definitely, like, herself. Like, she had little eyes and little mouth and all her fingers and toes and, like, yeah. Like, and that vision of them in that is so scary. Like, I'm going to. The vision of them 
passed away and like you can't get that out of your brain like you can't that like every time I closed my eyes for the first few nights at least when we got home from the hospital that was the only vision I had was Millie dead and her mouth open and her skin had changed and if heartfelt weren't there taking the photos for us we would have absolutely not had those photos and it's only been a couple of weeks ago when I got that um uh the the doll made at the same weight as Millie that I was trying to find a particular photo of her in this outfit that I went through the photos and I found it to send to the girl who made the doll and it's so strange because I looked at the photos and I thought oh they're not as bad as I remembered yes that's right I know yeah yeah, and I was like well I like my brain at the time was like this is and Dylan's as well like we were both like get us the fuck out of here and I don't I don't think Dylan's ever looked at those photos since I could guarantee you actually he has not but I think I've looked at them so many times and I guess my brain is in a different space now but yeah they don't look as and maybe because I'm in this community now and I see everybody's photos and every time I see like if I saw your photos I'd be like oh we we had a, a yeah. brunch here a couple of weeks ago and one of the girls was like, do you want to see? So she had um, Whitaker. You might follow Crystal um, Whitaker's wings. And she was like, do you want to see Whitaker? And I was like, of course I do. And she showed me like freshly birthed Whitaker, stillborn. Oh, and I beautiful. was like, oh, I know. I was like, oh, I love her, you know, like. Yeah. <sighs> but when it's your own child and you're in that space and you see that, it's just like, holy fuck I can't even look but I love you and I just want to speak love and you know it's it's fucked up it's fucked like none of us should ever 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 even know how that feels so what I'm trying to allude to is that you know it's so normal that you didn't take photos in that moment and you will forever still remember what she looks like and I think so um, yeah yeah and I'm glad you have the photos of her feet I love my Millie photos of her feet I've got one right here look at this Oh, that's stuck on me. Oh, God. Breaking shit. Look. Oh. Oh, yeah, that is so cute. I love yes. their little feet. Yes. Yes. And that's your um little profile pic um, on your yeah. Instagram. I love the pink foot. Yeah. Yeah. It's on so Instagram. Cool. It's on Facebook. It's on YouTube. It's like I can't change it now. <laughs> it's just her little foot. <laughs> Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Uh, so how much time did you guys choose to spend um in the room with Sienna? And so okay, and so we still don't know the gender at this point. So they've suggested don't you don't see her. They obviously, you know, helped make her look as beautiful as they could in that moment. They you had your time with her. You still don't know the gender and then yeah, so how much time did you spend with her? Um, so we, I'd birthed by about 7 PM and then we were keen to get home to the kids that night. Um, so they were working hard to help discharge us. Um, mm. and we left the hospital by about 9.30. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and... and for me, that was like the right decision for sure. Like I just, we just put the kids in bed with us. Like we just all went to bed together and mm. that was yeah, very. And you would have just had so, I know you're already a grateful person, but you would have just had like a billion times more gratitude and love and snuggles yeah. for those kids, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Um, very special. Question, what was I about to say? So you birthed her at 22 weeks, but if there was no reason, like there's no way for them to identify the gender and that normally happens 17 to 18 weeks, does that mean they then confirmed baby had stopped growing at that point and that's why? So literally no one ever suggested to me that baby can actually have delayed growth and now I can see so many people will be like, oh, my baby's measuring two weeks behind, even two and a half weeks behind. So I actually thought I was just the biggest like fool in the world and that my baby must have died like you know, a million years ago, like, you know, right. I, was, I went as yeah. far as like eight weeks ago and I thought that my doctor's appointment was like false and um, that like, yeah, I just was like really 
spiraling. Mm. Um, and I do know people where it's been so, 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 so long and mine was still so long. Like when you, if you tell people like it was probably four weeks, like I don't know, that's what I'm guessing. Um, I mean, that sounds so long to to, to anyone. Um, yeah. yeah, but I – there's a couple of really special things. So um, the first is that she's actually born o- on October 15th, the International uh, Pregnancy Loss Remembrance Day. Honey. Yeah. Yeah. So she's got a very special birthday and I'm really happy with her birthday. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. We can light a candle wow. for everyone in the world. <laughs> yeah. That's very powerful. <laughs> yeah. Um, she's named we'll get to names later but she is named after saint catherine of siena who's the patron saint against pregnancy loss so yeah Yeah. she's like my little mission in life yeah and um the other thing that we i learned later was that um for my i'm a school counselor one of my jobs and i Mm -hmm. became eligible for parental leave at 22 weeks oh yeah, well, that was going to be my next question. So was was her just was her birth? Did you listen to the podcast by Bianca where they changed her yes, birth date and gestation? Oh my gosh! Oh, I, I'm so angry for her. Oh my gosh! Mm-hmm. Yes, I did. Yes, mm-hmm. and yes. so they put down Sienna's gestation as 22 weeks. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, as they should. Yeah, yeah. yeah and so you should. got paid so... parental leave and mat leave. Yeah. Amazing. Yes. I know. And I did feel guilty about it too. Not for me. I felt guilty that like, yeah, that there's this cutoff that is, you know, quite a lot further along than what like women are expecting. So, you know, no miscarriage like should be expected to just go back to work after three days totally. or whatever. It's mm-hmm. crazy. And then, yeah, the fact that you don't get parental leave for like so much of that um, second trimester as well. It's like I think of Bianca okay. all the time. Like I am so grateful for my four months off and I don't know what I would have done if I had to go back to work. Like, well, I, I would have just had to pretend I'm okay, I guess. Like I don't, which yeah. is not healthy either. Like, but I, I mean, or maybe it is, I, maybe I'm in an unhealthy, like I'm no, seven you're months not. in you're and I'm like, job. fuck. <laughs> I feel no, like I'm doing- like, is this ever going to get better? No. Um, I felt guilty. I felt like I had to justify why I was going on leave. Um, mm. And I did that. Um, and it was so, like, I, 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 I believe in these entitlements, but, like, when it came to myself, I was still being an asshole. Mm. So, anyway, I was just like, it's for the girls. Like, it's in the interest of my girls. Like, they, you know, I'm a school counsellor. Like, they can't just have me rock up you know, next week and Absolutely. cancel them. Like, like no way. Yeah. So the principal was amazing though. Like I'm at a Catholic girls' school, so they were just beyond beautiful. They put a little mm. um, thing up in the chapel for me oh. um, and lit candles like every day for me and came to the funeral and, yeah. And that's so sweet. Yeah. And so you guys uh, had a funeral for her? Yeah. So what happened once I got home was that I had this wonderful social worker um, and I did end up back in hospital just because, um, like what you said, that shock trauma hit and I was just, I thought I had an infection, but it was just the realisation for my body that my baby wasn't with me anymore. (sighs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, And, yeah, and they checked all my vitals and were like, yeah, look, this is because your baby died, um, we'll get the social worker to call you. Mm. And um, the part that was horrible was that uh, at that point she said, um, I think she said it could take four weeks to find out um, the sex of my baby. Gosh, that would have been so hard. Yeah. And I was, I was just, yeah a bit beside myself and defeated. Um, But Michael and I made the decision to announce to everyone that we'd lost our baby Mm -hmm. anyway. 
And I just had to keep reminding myself, like, put yourself in someone else's shoes. Like, they're not going to be asking you the name and sex and caring about that stuff. Like, they're going to be like, oh, my gosh, Liv, like, your baby died. Like, that's so yeah. sad. Yeah. What can I do to help you? Yeah. So um, we told everyone and similar to you, like, just – accepted all the help like outpouring Ooh, um, so good people wanted to send flowers at first i was like what the fuck why are people sending me flowers and then i was like okay people are sending me flowers like these flowers are gonna yeah. go all around my house now yeah um and we still hadn't told francesca why and so i was like oh it's because i've been sick <laughs> getting all these flowers um, um and lots of food and stuff. yeah yeah i was a bit so delayed Frances- telling her. Just, okay yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, you I think were I, you sick. Know, I wanted let me, everything let me say, we're, we're, I feel like we're very sick at that point. Like, yeah. mummy's sick is a probably very valid thing to say. Yes, I know. I was really sick. I was <laughs> some of the sickest I've ever been. So, yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, but one thing that was really beautiful, it makes me think of Millie now as well, is that Joseph got sick too and he wouldn't leave my side. He was like my little puppy dog. And he'd make me take him on all these walks. And it was springtime in Melbourne. And so everyone's roses were blooming. Ah, I love that. And a lot of pink ones. And I would just take little photos of all the roses and save them in my little Sienna folder. Yay. Yeah. And that was before you'd heard of Millie? Was this right at the beginning? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It was before I'd heard of Millie. Yeah. Ugh, I love that. Um, Yeah, and then um, uh, we ended up the following week getting told by the social worker again that it might be like nine weeks until what? we find out the sex. And that, at that point, I was like, you know what? I'm normally a pretty easygoing person, but like this is going to break me. Like I, I need to be able to process this and I can't. So I told Michael, who's my like little protector, my protective husband, I'm like, send them an angry email. Like, I don't care. Just go, go. Send and them an angry email. I love that. Like, yeah. we're bereaved parents and I need you to advocate for us. Yeah. Oh, so he did. And he's like, my wife's not coping. Like, she needs no. to know. Oh. And I got a call that afternoon and they said, we know that your baby has ovaries. What the fuck? So what took them so fucking long? Like, because in my head I'm thinking... Like, how can they not just check? Like, there's only a few things they need to check. Like, yes, if there's nothing external, but, like, so what the fuck took them so long? What, like? Uh, it was, Sorry. It was, Outburst. It was the hospital bureaucracy. It was like, um, you know, they, they deal with a lot of, um, you know, stillbirths and, and things like that at that hospital. So it was kind of like, and it's not as bad as Brisbane. I've heard how terrible things are in Brisbane. Um but basically it's like they uh, send everything off and then there's a formal process and everyone gets given a, an appointment somewhere between eight and 12 weeks right, okay. to get everything. And so okay. once we kicked up a bit of fuss, obviously like they were willing, they were able and willing to give us that information earlier. Yeah. Okay. Um, but again, they weren't, they couldn't give us like the bloods. Right. So that's why they were like, well, we've seen ovaries because they were, yes. they, oh, we didn't prove it anatomy so she had so, little ovaries yeah i know that was like the most beautiful moment i was like thank you so much <laughs> yeah i love that oh. and i was saying mm. to um i'm seeing like a red nose bereavement counselor said like naming sienna was the exact same emotions as naming francesca and joseph like it's just so special so true, true. yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so we had a little funeral. Um, it, it was at our church. It was really beautiful. Um, uh, I've got – I made this book for my kids. So it says Sienna Maria, our star sister. Oh, wow, that's absolutely beautiful. You and made that? The back that you, can see, you can see the little um, coffin that we had. Like it was just a cute little one with a little bark oh, rosebud. Oh, so nice. On the top. Yeah. yeah, and then the that page there just shows like the little ultrasound I was talking about with the hand. Ah, uh, very cute one. 
You made this for yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to be able to like really tell our story and for them to have like some, you know, little resource that they could use that explained who Sienna was to us and how she's part of our family. And so, yeah, um, made that book. It's very cute. I won't go through all of it, but it's the classic stuff like, you know, she's not with us anymore. She couldn't keep growing, um, mm. but she's with us in the stars and the moon and it's got all pictures of the kids like doing those things like you know like they're yeah that's so they're sweet. front and center and they're actually all photos taken in during sienna's life ah oh, so they're of you guys yes yeah. yeah yeah so it's like on our holiday and um you know when michael and i went to hospital and what the kids were doing at, at the grandparents house when we were at hospital. And... Gosh, that is so precious. Yeah, yeah. It's really nice. Oh. Um, but yeah, I was a bit of a wuss when it came to when was I going to tell Francesca and Joseph. Mm. And um, again, classic Francesca, she made it happen. She just goes to me one day in the car, Mum, when are you going to have three babies? Like, when is this baby coming? Mm -hmm. And I just turned to Michael and I said, okay. Like, this is it. Like, we're going to tell her now. Mm. So, so we, well, obviously, we didn't just do it in that moment. We sat, like, we came home and sat down and, and told her. Um, and how did, and how did you tell her? And she was wonderful. Uh, so, yeah, so I had, I didn't have the book in hardcover yet, but I had it in, um, like, on my computer. Mm -hmm. So I told her through the book. And then, well, first I told her the news, then I read her the book. And mm. then I... Um, read her a couple of other stories that we'd bought, like I Have an Angel and um, My Sister Above or My Sibling Above. Yeah. yeah. We love yeah. that. And but are they the, the words, books that the – baby the has so... died. Like the – Yeah, okay. You know, you have to say – You don't say like the other, passed away the or other, whatever. The, the, oh, hold on. I'll ask about that in a second. So the books, were they one of the ones – I think you said the social worker gave you some in the hospital to give the siblings? Yeah. Yeah, I found some online that I liked and I've got some from the social worker, yeah. So yeah, we have a little, so good. like, yeah, a little collection. collection of them. And is there, you were just saying then, so other words that are better to use, the baby has died rather than passed away, what's the difference? Yeah, so they say because your children at that age are so literal, um, you need to not say that, that they're, like, don't just say they're in heaven. Like, you can tell them they're in heaven and stuff as well, but you need to actually say that the baby has died. Okay. Um, Just be very matter of fact. Yeah. Yeah. Because apparently yeah. some, you know, people get awkward about saying that stuff and then the kids don't really. Yeah. Actually, I do know what you mean. Like instead of fluffing about, like you've got to be very straightforward about it. Stephanie was saying yesterday, so she has a little girl, Scarlett, and Scarlett, they were away camping, and Scarlett went, yes, mum, but baby is dead. And she was like, oh. But, but Steph was like, that is what happened. Like, baby, yes, yes, baby has died. Like, baby is dead. And she's like, kids just say things so. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it happens all, like, every day in our house. It's always, like, something about Sienna and how she's died. And it actually just helps you to just, yeah, just talk about it. Like, yeah, yeah. that's what happened. And you said that she yeah. handled it really well? Yeah, she did. So she was, like, really curious, you know, why did you choose the name Sienna? And um, she actually went and told her kinder class and her childcare class. I didn't prompt her. I didn't even, like, assist her. She just, you know, for new news sharing one day said, like, oh, oh you know. Bless. I have a baby sister and she died. <laughs> oh, goodness. And uh, I think but she said to one of them, you know. What confidence uh, little kids have, like how beautiful. Yeah. Like we get so scared to say that. Well, look, you said it at, at the, the sports game or at gymnastics and everyone just got awkward because we feel so awkward saying it and yet, you know, little Francesca's just like, oh, this happened. Yeah, I know. It's no wild. fear. Yeah, yeah, and she goes, but they're still, they're not here with us, but they're still in our hearts and stuff oh. like that. It's really cute. The teacher would have just been like, oh, trying not to cry. Yeah. 
Um, and then I did this summer. She's been um, – we've had friends over for her, little play dates, and she'll pull out her Sienna book and say to them, you know, we have someone who died, and then mm. read them the book. So she's educating. It's so beautiful. Yeah, that's friends. so beautiful. And that's what I feel yeah. like all the, all the little siblings in our community – are just going to grow up to be such warriors because warriors, not warriors, warriors because, like, warriors, we, yeah. you know, we as parents are, like, educating them and being so confident and talking about them and then they're going to grow up doing the same. Um, That's right. And I love that. Yeah. I love that so much. It, it is going to become a thing that is talked about more for sure. I think so for sure too. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, so then – uh, eight weeks after, um, we did have our hospital appointment. And um, it wasn't like what I expected at all. So just given her gestation and not having grown, you know, I was kind of leaning towards maybe a um, genetic condition. I didn't really know what. That was just like my mind was going towards like what would be the cause of death. Like just yeah. had no idea. Um. And then it turned out that um, there's a thing, I don't know if anyone else has had said it here yet, and it's called marginal cord insertion. And so what Ooh. it is is where instead of the umbilical cord being into the middle of the placenta, it's actually on the bottom or like the side oh. of a placenta. I don't think anyone's had that. Yeah, Imagine I don't think so cord. yet. And then on top of that, it was the um, hypercoiled umbilical cord, which I'm pretty sure someone yes, else someone at least has had that. Yeah. Yeah. So they think that just like I, those I two think Amy, things I think together, Amy Taylor had that last week, the hypercoil. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they think those two things together um, sadly just meant that there wasn't um, enough nutrients <laughs> coming through to baby to Sienna. And so yeah. I was going to say, did they not pick up on the cord insertion in an earlier scan, but you, did you have, you hadn't had scans that like were that in depth to have seen where the cord was? Um, no, I think that if the pregnancy progressed, they would have maybe, um, maybe noticed that at a later scan. Okay. Um, but also like, uh, when I went and told some friends, like I had friends who had had babies with the marginal cord insertion and other friends who'd had babies with the hypercoiling um, and they're, you know, their babies are, are fine. Okay. Um, so it wouldn't necessarily, yeah, I, I actually know that is not entirely true. One of my friends who did have the marginal cord insertion did say she was determined as high risk at some stage in her pregnancy, I think because okay. of that. So, yeah. yeah, I do think it does um, make you a high-risk pregnancy. Yeah, yeah, and then but... we just have to keep an eye on it, I guess. And so then I guess that mixed with the hypercord umbilical. Yeah. Okay. Hypercoil umbilical cord? Yeah, hy hypercoiling, yeah, yeah. But obviously, like, there's just, like, nothing that um, can be done, you know. So they can monitor, but. It's not going to change. And I guess the that's like, I don't, I don't know if it's better or worse to hear that. There's no answer to that. Is there? Like, it's like you know, you, there's nothing you could have done. There's nothing you could change. And then that's sometimes so scary because it's like, well, how do I prevent it again? And you can't. And yeah. And so, yeah. did you do an autopsy, or they didn't need to do one? Yeah. You did. Yeah, we yeah. did an autopsy. Um, and yeah. The, that was there was no other um, issues. Mm. Yeah. And so and genetic testing as well. Yeah, genetic testing. Oh, you did do? Okay. Yeah. 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 So we're just like do everything. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know. And so the what is now your risk going forward for um, your next pregnancy? You'll you'll be high risk, I imagine for the same yes, thing to happen yes. or is it yeah what's the what's the risk now so they just automatically put you in high risk because you had stillbirth mm -hmm. um but in terms of like real risk there there is actually no extra real mm -hmm. risk um because mm -hmm. as you can imagine similar 
with Millie, like this next baby is going to be a completely new baby. Everything yeah. about them is going to grow, you know, yeah. differently. Yeah. So your next baby yeah. will have its own placenta and its own cord and its, its own being. Exactly. And so the risk of it happening again, okay, is very minimal. right? Yeah. Yeah. But it is reassuring to get more scans. I was like, yes, please. Like just see me a bit more often and like, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness me. Goodness me. And so October, November, December, January, February. It's only been it's only been four months. Mm. Yeah. How how yeah. how are you doing day to day, like generally? Are you because I feel like I'm not okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm a fucking mess. I'm like, yeah. please somebody else tell me that you're not okay as well. <laughs> <laughs> like I, and I understand like every loss is um, different, but I just feel like to have had your first, like to lose your first baby <sighs> is so, so, so heavy. And, mm. you know, yeah, you don't, yet have your earthside children um it's also like all those emotions are so heightened in your first pregnancy like Mm. you know what i mean like the and even just the feeling of like responsibility and the ability Mm. to blame yourself like you know if i think about how i felt if i translate that and imagine if that had been for my first pregnancy i just feel like i would have been worse like so much worse yeah it's so true yeah it's so true. Yeah. And yeah, but, like there's, yeah, yeah I understand. Yeah. It, it, yeah. All loss, like loss, it was, it, it was interesting because Steph was saying it yesterday. She goes, I just think what you experienced is worse than what I experienced. And she was a full term stillbirth. And I'm like, they're all, f- and I think stillbirth is worse than having earth, you know, it's all fucked up, but I don't know whether we think that somebody else's story is worse because you just can't imagine somebody else experiencing what you've experienced. And then there's like this also, like your heart hurts for somebody else, yet we don't let it hurt as much for our own selves. Like you said before, something along the lines of what would I think if this was my friend? And yeah. so we should really see ourselves in that same way. But, yeah, I and I do know that a lot of the mums I talk to who have children, you know, you guys have a purpose to get up every day. And I so I guess I still struggle with that because it's like without the podcast, there's not a real lot that I want to get up for each each day and I don't have children to distract me and want to get up for. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hard. Yeah, I feel like when I hear your, the stories, like I haven't heard as many stories before in my life compared to now of these neonatal losses and – the one thing that really stands out to me is the terror, like that feeling, all those fears, all that, like just that huge level of emotion and even the pains that some of you have been through, like hearing people who didn't even get their pain meds before they had to like get episiotomies or get vacuumed oh, out. Oh, no. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like that stuff is so messed up. And that has a whole other trauma response like that. That's right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, but the other thing I learned quickly when I lost Sienna was I was like, part of me was minimizing the start because I didn't have as, I didn't feel like I had as much to lose in that moment, but the loss keeps growing with mm. how old your child would be. Like my child, like Sienna would have been being born now. So wow. now I can rem- like, imagine the baby mm. girl I was meant to bring home and yeah, um, think of all the memories, like all the things that I'm going to miss with her that I got with the other kids. Absolutely. So, and yeah. I think that's the thing as well, especially yeah. when somebody does lose a child, you know, second trimester, you know, you're not giving yourself the credit of, you know, well, I didn't have a nursery set up or she wasn't quite here yet. You didn't know the gender for so long, like all those things, but, yeah, like now her due date, her first birthday, all of the things. I um, have been chatting to Amanda Bowles, who was the one who created Bears of Hope, and oh, yeah. her boy Jesse would have turned 18 last month. So she created Bears of Hope around, around, because of Jesse. And, like, yeah, we've had, I won't share the intimate details of our conversation, but we had beautiful conversations. And to see what it's going to look like in 18 years 
when the rest of your family moves on, but you as your as the, the mother, the person who carried that child doesn't. And yeah. it scares the fuck out of me, but it's also like, you know what, if no one else is going to remember my child, at least I will. You know, and so you will always, even in 18 years, still remember Sienna and feel her and celebrate her and, and know that she was meant to be, even as this little tiny body that you grew and birthed like yeah vag- vaginally yeah. birthing a, a baby that you know you don't get to keep i think is so powerful like amazing yeah i think as well with, as lost moms like we are so cautious like we don't want to make any assumptions about each other's losses and experiences and things like that and so you know i would be really cautious to say that my loss is similar to if it was one of my children, like to, you know, one that I've been raising. But if I speak about my own children, then I'm like, well, it actually is similar because I know what grief feels like now. I know the process of grieving. And I also know the immense level of gratitude you feel for what you do have. So Mm. I can say hands on heart that if I did lose one of my other children, that I'd be grateful for all the time I've had with them. Mm. Mm. Like I can say that because I know I can feel it. Like that mm. feeling of like every you're like once you have a loss like this, you're just so grateful that for every day you get like yeah. And you had yeah. twenty. You know, you had Sienna wasn't just a stillbirth that you never had. You had her for twenty two weeks, and you knew about it from very early on. So, like that's the other thing I think a lot of people don't think and. I had to, a lot of people reminded me when I lost Millie, I didn't just have her for six days. I had her for 39 weeks and six days. Like I had her inside of me for all that time. And I am so grateful for that. Like I fucking, like, even though I was so sick, I loved being pregnant. I was so grateful. I would vomit and then be like, oh, I love you, child. (laughs) You know, like, gosh how lucky I was to grow her all that time and just have that time with her on my own it's so funny with social media because one of the things I used to find so devastating when I would see someone post um that their baby had died was like that two days before that they were so happy and excited like you would see Mm. that that come down um but not only do you see it you can go back to it so, like, I've mm. gone back to your posts when you're pregnant and, like, seen that excitement, seen when you've gotten married and you've got Millie and when you thought, and I hope this isn't too triggering for you, but, like, when you thought no. you were out of the woods and everything was going to be fine and, like, this was going to be your rainbow baby, like, yeah, yeah it's <laughs> fucked up. It's like, it is wild, hey. Like, I always yeah. wonder whether how far back people scroll because I've posted so yeah. much since she died, but it's like, fuck, like, I was, like, I was in it, you know, like, I was prepared. I had everything. And you feel fucking stupid, though. Like, I feel like an idiot. I'm like, why do people set up nurseries before they even bring their child home? Like, why is this yeah. a thing? Because it's fucking awful when they die and you don't get to bring them home. And I hate that that's my thought but like I look at all the shit I bought and think what an idiot you know <laughs> like oh yeah, yeah I think it's, you're just so you try to protect wiser. your hearts you can't you can't protect your heart like that's that doesn't exist that's not a thing mm, yeah so if you hadn't bought all those things familiar you would just regret that you hadn't bought all those things so true so true actually yeah. and stephanie said that yesterday in her podcast she said i never bought i never bought anything for sage we didn't have a room set up and maybe she died because i didn't have anything for her and I just i i showed her this whole room i was like girlfriend that is not what happened <laughs> yeah you know like yeah wow you're so right like yeah. no matter which way yeah. you do it it's still gonna um, fuck with but our i heads, had two right? little um two little symbols like moments that happened that i wanted to share with you mm-hmm. um so one was just before um, school, my Francesca's just started prep, so um, very exciting. Mm-hmm, and um, just before um, she went back, we went down to the beach. And, you know, I was just on at the beach, like all the beautiful, um, you know, sparkly lights and stuff, and I just thought, like, 
Oh, but I want something like really that tells me Santa's here, like not just something that I have to really yeah. think about, but that just shows me like bang. And then like right in front of me was a rose on the beach. A rose? A rose, a red rose on the beach. What? And like obviously it would have been like one of those dumb romantic, like when they give out the roses things, but like it was just but sitting still, there. Like, like why is a, a whole rose bud just sitting there on the beach? I love on the beach. that. Yeah. And then on the weekend, <sighs> um, we were bringing home some helium balloons. My kids crashed a, a party at the local bowls club that they weren't invited to. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. And, um, you know, obviously you can't do, well, you're not meant to do balloon releases and stuff. So I'm always telling the kids, they always want to give Sienna a balloon. And I'm like, no, no, like we'll do bubbles. We'll oh, do other that's things. so cute. Right. Yeah. I was like, maybe for her birthday, we'll just do one. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Accidentally, like it was tied to the pram, but accidentally a purple balloon went up to the sky. And um, Francesca's decided, because pink's her favourite colour, that Sienna's is purple. <laughs> oh, stop. That's giving me So we had like bumps. eight balloons. We had eight balloons and the purple one went to the sky. Shut up. I know. It's crazy. Like that's <laughs> th – how do people not believe in this shit? Like that's I know. for sure Sienna being like, give me my damn balloon. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Yeah. I know, it's so nice, so special. Yeah. <sighs> That's amazing. That's amazing. I do love that. I mean, I think of Sienna every time I see purple now. <laughs> mm, I love that Francesca's like, no, pink is my colour. Sienna can yes. have purple. <laughs> yes. <sighs> Goodness yeah. me. How funny, I just looked at the time and one hour and 11 minutes, one, one, one. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know. I know. Amazing. We did do it, I think, about 30 minutes beforehand, which is so cool. I'm so I'm really praying that all of our audio sounds amazing. Please, Sienna and Millie, I make know, sure it does. I know. We can't recreate this. <laughs> it's been so patchy, but usually it sounds patchy and then, like, the, the app fixes it in the background. So let's just pray to our angels that it. They fix it for yes, us. Yes, yes. Millie, Sienna. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to help your mommy's out. Yeah. Oh, well, it has been yeah. so amazing to chat to you. Was there anything else that you wanted to touch on? I think I like to recap a little bit. I, goodness me, where would I even? I just think, I think, I'm, I think the advice of, I'm so sorry your baby has died is like, because I know that medical professionals are listening to this and I know that people are sharing it and all the other things. And I just think you saying that hearing that was better than, um, you know, there is no heartbeat. And I guess there is no heartbeat has such a stigma around it because people just don't want to hear that, but you heard it in a different way. Um, I think the no, like not knowing the gender for so long and not being able to connect in that way was so big. Like that just adds a whole other element and I haven't heard of that before. And I, I wonder if there's anyone else, if there is anyone else out there that's experienced that, I know they're going to resonate so much with your story. Um, and I just still can't believe that Francesca was like, mummy, you're going to have a baby, but she might, she might die or what? Like that just still blows my mind. And then yeah. the purple balloon yeah. just like flying up to heaven. <laughs> So beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. My only other advice for any midwife is just like take all the photos, um, even if the family don't know what they want at the time, just like so tell true. them I'm going to send this to a, like to your Gmail or whatever email you have. Yeah. And you can open it when you're ready. That's like my number one advice to any um, health professionals that are dealing with a birth like okay. that. Yeah, it, that's so true. And because that is something that you regret is not having photos of her. Yeah. Yeah, that's such that's such good advice and so valid. And I know we were the same. I was just like, I don't know if we want that, but just, yeah, whatever, do it. And then I'm, they, I know, I think they said to us at the time, like, if you don't want it, you can tell us to go away at any time or you might not ever look at them, but at least they're there. Um, so that is amazing advice. Um, and also that you said that you were similar to us, that you just accepted all the help. Yeah. And I know that everyone is very different, but I feel like accepting the help 
makes others feel better, which, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, it is about everybody. It is about your community as well. And people do want to help. Um, and I think also like other people are experiencing your loss as well. Like, you know, your mum and dad experience that's their granddaughter that they lost and to your cousins, it's their cousin, it's to your auntie, it's their niece and uh, it's to your siblings, it's their niece getting all of them. <laughs> you know, my, si- my sister really struggled losing her niece. Like my yeah. daughter was her first niece, uh, her first we've got we've got nine nieces and nephews so we have a big family but it was the first time her sister had had a baby like you know she really 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 struggled and so allowing people to help in that like if I just blocked them all out and was like "Uh -uh, I don't want a bar of it they would have been like it would be harder for their grief in a different way as well so I think that's that's valid and fair and I know there's a lot of people that just say like no I just didn't want it and that's also fine but I, I think allowing people to help is a beautiful part of it as well yeah yeah Mm. definitely and Mm. I think I'll add to that I think I'll add to that I think people feel from what I've experienced in other podcasts like if people have said no in the beginning like I don't want help I don't want anyone then people struggle to come back to you so like people will say oh four months later no one was around because generally that everyone got pushed away in the beginning. So people don't know how to come back. Whereas I feel like even eight months on, I still have phenomenal su- support from a lot of people. Everyone is still reaching out. Everyone is still around. The people from the church are still reaching out to me because I let them all in from the start. And I have very quiet days. I have not, the doors closed, no one talked to me or I don't answer my phone, but I still have the support there. I think because we allowed it in. If in the beginning, in that first couple of weeks, we pushed it away, I don't mm. think people would have tried to come back if that makes sense yeah that definitely makes sense and like Mm. that's one of the things I did around our funeral like it's very scary to have a funeral for your own little baby and put yourself in that situation where everyone's going to see you just distraught Um, yeah but I gave my dad the job of catering my mum got all her roses from her garden to put around the coffin beautiful and um we had like 120 people there like I let all my colleagues and bosses and anyone who wanted to come came um it's at the same church that my kids have been baptized at that we go to every sunday and then we went down to the local bowls club and had a wake there which is what we always do after every baptism as well that we have a party there so i was like this is sienna's day yeah yeah so i think think that's so beautiful about your babies yeah yeah, and I think having everybody there gives them that connection to the baby and to the loss and to you guys as well. Um, I know that yeah. Ben Ben and Lisa, who I interviewed together a couple of weeks ago, yeah. um, they had the baby, uh, the gender reveal, and then found out the next day or two days later that she wasn't going to survive. And so I said at the time, I was like, how beautiful though, because all of your friends and family connected to this baby as a little girl to then find, and, and Ben was like, oh, I'd never thought of that. And so, yeah, I just think it's, I think having that connection is really beautiful and it allows people also to feel deeper and more connected to your child. For sure, definitely. And that's what I love about Millie, like you're sharing her to all of us. And so we mm. all feel connected to her. Thank yeah, you. It's really special. Love love that so much well i haven't said it in a while but i do truly believe that when we make friends on earth that our babies are dancing in heaven together so i do believe that sienna and millie are having a little party today going yay our mums are friends <laughs> yes for sure definitely i love that it has little, been a... millie's in her pink dress and sienna's in her purple dress <laughs> absolutely and I don't know if you can see it from your side of the screen but every time we speak our screen is highlighted in purple can you see that oh, on your yeah, side yeah 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 huh? I just like I was like that's the purple I keep imagining it and I can see it yes definitely lilac purple. I love yeah yeah <laughs> I love that well Liv thank you so mm-hmm. much your potty's gonna be out next Sunday and so if you think Amazing. of anything any Normally people message me and be like, oh, my gosh, I had said this and I should have said this. Can you pop it in the show notes? <laughs> if there's any way that you want people to contact you, you can put that in there. If you don't, that's also fine. But, um, yeah, thank you again for sharing Sienna with us. And it's a very, very educational podcast. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rochelle. Thank you so much. And 
keep up the great work <laughs> thank as you as long as you have it in you <laughs> i know i know i will i will i love it uh thank you so yeah. much and i look forward to chatting to you more soon okay see you thanks bye, Liv. bye.